again today. The Water Snail. Berry, Dolly, Flutter, and Balthazar were sitting around in the meadow. I wish I had a cousin too, a distant snail relative. Berry sighed. But you've got a sort of cousin, Berry. The water snail is a kind of snail. Flutter the butterfly said. Really? Berry jumped to his feet with a grin. Where does this water snail live? Nowhere. I don't think there's such a thing as a water snail. Oh yes, there is. I know where he lives. He's got a little house deep down in the round pond on the other side of the forest. You're talking nonsense," the bee said. "Why don't we go down to the round pond to see for ourselves? Come with me. I'll take you," Hedgehog Harry told his friends. "We can be there before it gets dark." Hooray! Berry whooped. "I'll bring the air tank so we can swim down to the bottom of the pond." Berry, Dolly, Flutter, and Balthazar hopped into the hedgehog cart and set out for the round pond. It was late in the evening by the time they finally caught sight of the pond. The cart's running away! The little bee shouted, but it was already too late. The hedgehog cart rolled right into the water. It's too late to do anything today. Let's go to bed, and tomorrow you can all swim down to the bottom of the pond. I'm sure you'll find the cart. Harry comforted them. Berry woke up bright and early the next morning. Look, the water lily has opened its petals, and there's someone standing on its leaf, and he's waving at us. Who are you? Hello, everybody. My name's Sam Snail, and I live deep down at the bottom of the Round Pond. See, Balthazar, water snails do exist after all. I've got my own proper cousin now. Sam Snail didn't understand why Berry was so happy to see him, but then Dolly told him why they had come. I'm so happy to meet you, cousin Berry. The water snail said. Would you help us find our cart that rolled into the water, Sam? Flutter asked. I'd be delighted. Follow me, the water snail said. So the four friends slipped into their swimming costumes and swam all the way down to the bottom of the pond. This is where I live, Sam Snail announced with pride. They heard a frightening hissing sound that scared Berry, Dolly, Flutter, and Balthazar, who hid behind the house. Don't be scared. It's my friend, the water snake. Water snake, have you seen a cart at the bottom of the pond by any chance? Hang on to me, and I'll take you there. There it is. The water snake hissed. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, and Flutter were happy they'd found it. You did it," said Harry. He was so happy to see his little friends again. Let's go for a trip on the pond," Sam Snail suggested. They all sat on the lily pad, and Sam Snail started rowing. It's time we were going," Dolly said when it began to get dark. "Oh, let's stay a little longer," Berry pleaded. "We'll come again another day." Flutter reassured the little snail. Harry Hedgehog was already waiting for them. Berry, Dolly, Flutter, and Balthazar all said goodbye to Sam Snail and headed for home. The next day, Berry and Dolly both painted colourful pictures of their distant cousins. Berry and Dolly say, "What will we learn today?" The football match. One morning, Stanley was woken by the sound of someone knocking on his door. Stanley, it's me, Frank. The little stag beetle crawled out of his bed and saw Frank, the longhorn beetle. Hello there, Frank. It's super to see you," Stanley said, and the old pals hugged. I 
brought this for you. A football hooray! We'll need teams to play a proper game, Frank reminded him. Then we'll tell the others to come and we'll have proper teams, the stag beetle suggested. The two boys called on all the others to come and play football with them. They visited every house and by the time they had reached the edge of the forest, they had two teams. Alfonso agreed to be the referee. We should sew them football shirts, Rosita suggested. One team can play in blue and one team can play in red. The footballers spent the whole week training. We sewed these for you, Zephyr told them, and she handed the red and blue shirts to Stanley. Thank you, the two teams said together, and they slipped on their new football shirts. Dolly and Rosita set benches up, and the spectators all sat at the side of the pitch. Alfonso blew his referee's whistle, and the match began. That's it, run Bubble, Stanley yelled. Here, pass it to me, Bubble shouted. Hooray! The blue team cheered as they all embraced. Come on, Reds! Come on, Blues! The crowd cheered. That's not fair, Frank. You can't touch the ball with your hand, the b-boy complained. Balthazar's right. Don't do it again, Frank. It's against the rules, the referee said. The match got very exciting. The Blues were leading three goals to two when the game stopped again. Frank tripped me up, Bubble complained. Yes, I saw that too, Alfonso agreed. I'll have to send you off if you break the rules again, Frank. Stanley's team looked set to win. Frank started to get crosser and crosser. I'm going to score a goal now, he shouted, and he pushed Berry so hard that they ended up falling over and Frank shouted out in pain. Ouch! My arm! The others all ran over. I'll run and fetch Dr. Owl, Zephyr announced. If you hadn't hurt yourself so badly, I'd send you off, Alfonso said. Yes, I know, Frank said sadly, but my hand really hurts. Dr. Owl was soon at the scene. Well, you've broken your arm. I'll have to put it in plaster and you'll have to keep it on for four weeks. You'll need to look after it and no running around. The blue team won the football match. We'll have to wait a while before we can play again. Stanley said, and he patted Frank on the back. Don't be sad, you'll soon be as fit as a fiddle again. I'm sorry that I broke the rules, Frank sniffed. I promise to play fairly when my arm has mended, and we can have another good game of football. I think we should all decorate Frank's plaster cast, Dolly said with a grin. Let's go back to my house for a snack. The big crowd of friends all piled into Dolly's spotty house. They got her crayons out and drew all kinds of funny things on the Longhorn Beetle's plaster. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir after Dr. Owl takes it off, Frank told them all. Then all the friends sat around the table and ate every last piece of the delicious sponge roll. Today. Harry Hedgehog's Birthday One summer morning, Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybird and their forest friends were playing in the meadow. They were taking turns on the leaf swing. It must be so much fun to play on that swing. And it's a shame I'm too heavy for it, Harry Hedgehog sighed. His friends didn't know what to say. It's Harry Hedgehog's 10th birthday next week. The ladybird said. He'll be ten years old, the little snail nodded. What do you think he'd like for his birthday? I know, Balthazar exclaimed and jumped to his feet. A swing! That's a super idea. Let's make a big swing for Harry. 
Dolly said enthusiastically. The little friends got to work immediately. They brought a saw, a hammer, nails and screws and searched for some strong branches. They tied the swing to thick wooden poles with very strong string. When the swing was ready, they all went to Balthazar's house to bake a cake. They cracked eggs and stirred the butter. The mixer whirred away and wooden spoons clattered in bowls. The little bee's kitchen was soon filled with delicious smells. They decorated the cake all over with cherries, raisins and walnuts. Let's put candles on it, Flutter said. Yes, ten candles, Dolly nodded. Let's write a letter to Harry, Berry said. Dear Harry, please come to Balthazar's house at lunchtime. We'll all see you there. Can you take it to Harry, please? Berry asked. But don't say a word about the cake and the swing, Dolly shouted after him. Balthazar and Stanley put the cake on a round table and carried it out of the house. The little ants were playing hide and seek and suddenly the smallest ant ran right into the table. <coughs> You tipped the table over! The cake's ruined! Balthazar moaned. The cake? What are we going to do now? Dolly sobbed. Harry Hedgehog will be here any minute and he won't have a cake! The little ants felt very sorry for what they'd done, but one of them had an idea. Let's gather lots of fruit and berries and build a big pile. It'll be almost like a cake, won't it? That's a good idea, Stanley said. I know Harry loves fruit. Mm. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Stanley and the little ants began to gather fruit in the forest. Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly and Rosita the rose beetle helped them too. Mm. They soon had a very big pile indeed. Stanley stuck ten candles on top of the fruit, just seconds before Bubble arrived with Harry Hedgehog. Happy birthday, Harry! They all shouted. Wow, look at all that delicious fruit, my favourite. Thank you very much, the hedgehog exclaimed. We've got a surprise for you, Dolly said, and they led Harry to the swing. Harry was very surprised. What a big swing! Can I use it? He asked cheerfully. Yes, we built it for you. Hooray! Now I can swing too! Thank you so much! Then they stood around the fruit pile and began to eat. They ate and ate until nearly all the fruit was gone. They stuck the leftover apples and pears on Harry's spikes and he took them home to his mossy house. Harry went to bed with a happy smile and looked forward to tomorrow when he'd swing with his friends again. Today. Alfonso's Fiddle One autumn day, Alfonso the Cricket stood happily playing his fiddle in the mushroom field. The forest friends were all enjoying the lovely music. The little ants were playing football on the hill. But oh dear, the ball bounced away and knocked the fiddle clean out of Alfonso's hands. Alfonso <laughs> shouted in horror. My fiddle! My fiddle's broken! And then he burst into tears. He was sobbing so loudly that everyone came to see what the fuss was all about. Alfonso pointed angrily at the spotty ball. That ball! That ball is to blame! And those naughty ants! Where am I going to get a fiddle from now? He picked his broken fiddle up, went into his house and slammed the door shut behind him. Alfonso, Alfonso, come out. I'm sure we can help you, Berry pleaded. But Alfonso didn't want to see anybody. 
His friends sat sadly in the mushroom field and didn't know what to do. Then Dolly had an idea. I know. Let's make Alfonso a new fiddle. Yes, let's make a new fiddle, Flutter the butterfly nodded. I know who can help us. We have to find Charlie the click beetle. He made Alfonso's first fiddle. The band of friends set off and walked and walked until they reached a blue house. They knocked on the door. A tiny, timid beetle popped his head out. He wore a blue hat and had beautiful dark blue wings. Who are you? he asked. Dolly told Charlie the whole story. Oh, but don't be sad. If that's your problem, I'm happy to help. Alfonso will be playing music on his new fiddle in no time at all. The click beetle gave everybody a job to do. Some collected wood for the body of the fiddle, while others gathered grass for the strings. Now he had everything he needed, Charlie got to work. He sawed, sanded, polished and waxed. And then, like a little miracle, the new fiddle was ready. Can I try it? Dolly asked. No, it's Alfonso's instrument, Flutter told her. But I want to have my own musical instrument, Dolly sulked. Me too, me too, the little ants shouted. Quiet, said Charlie. Why don't you all start an orchestra? A great big orchestra. Like a music band? And everybody could have their own instrument? That's a very good idea. The first thing they made was a harp for Dolly. Stanley the Stag Beetle got a double bass and Eddie the Potato Beetle had a cello. Berry made a trumpet out of a lily. Morris the Maybug made a horn from a honeysuckle flower. The big spider used horse chestnuts and acorns for drums, while Zephyr and Leapy made cymbals out of pebbles. Charlie carved flutes from birch twigs for the ants. Flutter the butterfly got a lute, and Balthazar the bee got a zither. Bubble the baby beetle played a triangle. They all had a quick practice and then headed for Alfonso's house. Alfonso heard the music and looked out of his window to see where it was coming from. He was surprised by what he saw. Please, Alfonso, the little ant began. Don't be mad at us for breaking your fiddle. We'd like you to have this new one as a present. Charlie made it. Alfonso began to play straight away and the sound of his fiddle filled the forest once more. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Scooter One spring morning, Maurice the Maybug decided to make himself a scooter. He spent the whole day sawing, drilling and hammering. And when he was finished, he painted the scooter black. Then he hurried to show his super scooter to his friends. The boys were all playing basketball in the meadow. Berry, Stanley, Balthazar, Eddie, Bubble and Alfonso. Look at my new scooter. I made it all myself. Can I have a try? No one can borrow it. It's mine. I only want to try it for a minute. We'd like to have a go on it too. Then we'll give it back. I'm not lending it to anyone, Morris told them again. The boys were so busy arguing that they didn't spot Eddie, who grabbed the scooter and rode off on it. Stop! Bring it back! It's my scooter and I didn't lend it to you! I'm not lending it to anyone! Eddie slowed down and Morris soon caught up with him. Give me my scooter back! Here you are, it doesn't go fast enough anyway. Not fast enough? Look at this! enough you can hardly keep up with me he shouted with a laugh but he didn't see a big pothole in the middle of the road watch out Morris 
Balthazar, Berry and Stanley all shouted at once, but it was too late. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Morris, Balthazar said in a snooty tone. What happened, Morris? Are you badly scratched? Why aren't you boys helping him? The rose beetle asked the others. It's all Morris's fault. It doesn't matter how it happened. He's really hurt himself and you should have helped. Come back to my house, Morris, and I'll clean those nasty scratches for you. Rosita sat Morris down and washed his wounds with a warm, wet cloth. It doesn't look that bad now. Morris started to sob. It was all my fault because I was mean to the others. If I hadn't been so mean, it wouldn't have happened. Then don't be mean next time. Thank you for all your help, Morris said as he left. It was nothing. You'll feel better soon. Morris limped all the way back to his house. The minute he got home, he jumped into bed and he was soon fast asleep. The little Maybug woke up the next morning with a wonderful idea. He got out his paints and brushes. I'm going to paint you pink. Look at you. I've brought this for you. Thank you for helping me yesterday. It looks lovely. Did you paint it? Rosita asked. Yes, I thought you wouldn't like it black. I love it. I'm going to ride it over to Dolly's house. Be careful, have a safe ride. Morris walked home and he was about to eat his lunch when he heard a knock at the door. Hello, Morris, Balthazar said first. We came to see if you're feeling better. Much better, thank you, Morris shrugged. I promise that I won't take your scooter again, Eddie said with an apologetic smile. I haven't got it anymore. I painted it pink and gave it to Rosita. But I can make a new scooter, Morris said. I promised Rosita that I won't be mean again. Everyone can have a go on my new scooter when it's finished. Hooray! Bubble shouted. Now would you all like a piece of apple pie? I baked it myself. Morris soon finished the new scooter. He painted it dark green. All the friends gathered in the meadow the next day and took turns to have a go on the two scooters. Today. The Hot Air Balloon One summer afternoon a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly, someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the oil beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The oil beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. 
The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger, and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready, said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you! Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Little Bumblebee Early one morning, Berry, Dolly and Balthazar went out to play in the meadow. They wanted to try out the new parachute the little bee had made. But a little bumblebee was picking lilac flowers and singing a happy song. The winter's gone and it's the spring. Lilac is my favourite thing. Balthazar was the first to greet her. Hello, little bumblebee. My name's Balthazar. This is Berry the snail and Dolly the ladybird. Who are you? My name's Betty. I was flying home and I decided to stop and pick lilac flowers in the meadow. We're on our way to try this new parachute. Do you want to come with us? Balthazar asked. I'd love to. Balthazar and Betty were the first to jump and then the other friends tried the colourful parachute. They played until it got dark. Will you play with us again tomorrow? Balthazar asked excitedly. I can't. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. My home is far away from here and I still have a long way to go. So Berry, Dolly and Balthazar said goodbye to Betty. Balthazar looked very upset, so Dolly asked him. What's wrong? <laughs> Balthazar's got a girlfriend, Berry laughed. Don't make fun of him, Berry, Dolly said angrily. You know what, Balthazar? Ask Betty to stay here. We can build her a house in the woods. That's a super idea. I'll go to the meadow tomorrow morning and ask her to stay. Balthazar, Dolly and Berry got up very early the next day. They hurried to the meadow to talk to Betty. But the friends were too late. The little bumblebee had already left. The only thing they found was a farewell note she'd left for them pinned to a tree. Balthazar sat down on the grass and started to cry. 
Berry didn't laugh at him this time. Let's go after her, the little snail said. I'm sure we can catch her up. Berry, you're such a slow snail. We'll never catch up with Betty if you don't hurry up. Berry was going to say something back to Balthazar when a hedgehog stepped out of the bushes. Perhaps I can help. Now I'm not too fast, but I'm sure I'm much faster than you three. The friends liked the idea. They built a little cart out of a horse chestnut shell and tied it to the hedgehog's spikes. The hedgehog cart was ready to roll. Let's rest a little while, Dolly suggested when it got dark. We'll carry on tomorrow morning. Balthazar started to cry again. We'll never find her. I can smell something sweet. It's lilac blossom. Lilac? Dolly wondered. But there aren't any lilac bushes around here. Let's look around. Would you like to come back and live with us? We could build you a little bumblebee house in a tree. You wouldn't have to fly back to your faraway home. We'd be so happy if you lived with us. That's a super idea. We'd all be very happy. Berry and Dolly nodded. Thank you. I'd love to come and live with you. Betty replied. She was happy. You came all this way to find me. That's so nice of you. They all jumped into the hedgehog cart and trundled back to the meadow. They started to build the house the very next morning. They built Betty a pretty tree house near the lilac field. When the bumblebee's house was ready, they had a big party. All the forest friends were invited. They danced and ate late into the night and made their new neighbour very welcome indeed. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Kindergarten One autumn morning, Dolly knocked excitedly on Barry's door. Come quickly, Barry, or we'll be late. Barry got ready and the two friends held hands and walked to the nursery together. Lots of little children were gathered in the playground. They were all so happy to see each other. There was Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly, Stanley the stag beetle, Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly, Alfonso the cricket, Leapy the grasshopper and Bubble the baby beetle. Mrs Bumblebee patiently guided everybody into their classrooms. The little, middle and top children went into different rooms. Bubble was in the little group. He waved to Berry and Dolly from the doorway. The day started with exercises. After breakfast, the children made beautiful pictures using the leaves they collected in the woods. When everybody had finished, Mrs Bumblebee gathered the children in a circle. She taught them lots of songs and games. The children all danced around. Then it was playtime. Mrs Bumblebee sat in a rocking chair and watched the children. Berry and the boys ran straight over to the car box and started playing cars. They built ramps and tunnels. Can I join in, boys? Dolly asked. She was holding a broken red car. Oh no, Dolly, you can't play cars with that old thing, Berry told her. And anyway, cars are for boys, not girls. That made Dolly cry. The boys don't want to play with me, she told Flutter. Flutter, Leapy and Zephyr quickly cheered her up. Come and play with us, we're playing with dolls. The girls dressed their dolls in pretty dresses, fed them and rocked them to sleep. Dolly liked this game a lot. Then Berry got into an argument with Morris the Maybug. You keep knocking my car over. It's not fair. You're a cheat. That's not true. You're a cheat, 
replied Morris. That's it. I'm not playing with you anymore, Berry said sulkily and left the boys. Can I join in your game? Berry asked his friend Dolly. You can't play with us. It's a girl's game, Dolly sulked. But I brought this doll with me. It's got curly hair. I want to play with you. All right. Come and play with us. But now you have to let me play cars with you. Children, time to wash your hands, Mrs Bumblebee shouted. Then go and sit down at the tables. Mrs Earwig, the dinner lady, dished up their dinner. When everybody had finished eating, Berry and Dolly collected up all the plates and glasses. Then the children had a little lie down, while Mrs Bumblebee read them a story. They all listened in silence, and a few of them fell fast asleep. When they got up, they all had a snack and went out into the playground. It was enormous and filled with all kinds of slides, climbing frames and swings, with a big wooden train in the middle. Barry and Morris quickly made friends again and played on the swings together. Dolly helped Bubble up the slide and caught him at the bottom. Bubble liked that a lot. The rest of the day flew by and soon the children were waving goodbye to each other. They couldn't wait for tomorrow to come.